Hey, Giant fans, welcome to the Giant Insider Podcast. My name is Jerry Foley. I'm the senior editor of the Giant Insider newspaper, and with me, as always, is the beat writer in the heart of Giants Nation. Nobody beats the biz, Chris Bizignano. And also joining us tonight, guys, are the, are the boys from New York Revival, Eli, Mr. Glass Half Full, and I believe Hefe will be joining as well. So should be a hell of a time. But before they join in a few minutes, Chris, um, what a what a day Monday was when it started off, right? Like, um, you've been saying it for quite a while now that Saquon Barkley would not be back. I was a little surprised that McKinney wasn't back, but I, I think you felt that he wouldn't be as well. Um, I was hoping against hope that he would be. Like I said from the start, I, I was more disappointed that McKinney wasn't re-signed. But Chris, by the end of the day, um, I don't know, man. I felt pretty good about what we did, what the Giants did uh, the last couple of days, actually. But man getting brian burns and well i mean it's a whirlwind we could talk about we could talk about the saquon going to philly we could talk about mckinney leaving burns coming in signing john runyon's son john runyon and now john runyon has to root for the giants which i'm happy about um but yeah dude i mean what a like i don't even know where to begin i guess we could start with uh with barkley um not a surprise that he left it, it stung a little and you asked me this the other day you said would it hurt you if he went to philly and I would say it's 90-10 for me. 90 is like, eh, whatever. I didn't expect him back. But there's the 10% of me that's like, oh, man, he went to Philly? Oh, God. Mm -hmm. And then the text messages rolled in, and the Eagle fans were like, oh, looks like he has a line to run behind now, uh, and just stuff like that. So it is what it is. It, you know, he got the money. Um, goodbye, Saquon. Thanks. You're, you're, you know, you were a class act while you were here. I didn't like his goodbye, I'll be honest with you. Um, but whatever. Mm -hmm. By the end of the day, um, we got Brian Burns, dude. You, I, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place, but that's that's what happens when you hadn't spoken since Monday. So, um, I guess we could start with Barkley, dude. Yeah, well, he went with the money, right? I mean, that's yeah. what it always comes so, down to. So, yep. So he went with the money. Um, yep. And look, he's from Pennsylvania. I know he's born in the Bronx, but he's from Pennsylvania. He's raised in Pennsylvania. He goes home. He's a Penn State kid. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> you know. The Giants won't go in 12 million. I told you that. They were going eight, nine tops. Yeah. Yep. And I think that's the right move, by the way. Yeah. And and the Eagles came in and with that big contract. And uh the Eagles aren't really known for paying running backs, although they do have two of the largest, biggest running back contracts in the last 10 years or so. They had DeMarco Murray, too, was a big one back in the day. Yeah. Um, so they will here and there. So they saw Saquon and they targeted him. And and, uh, you know, he, him, from what I understand, it, it came down to him and, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Philly and Houston. Houston was offering yeah. around 11 plus two. Yeah. 11. And uh, I think the Eagles wound up more guaranteed, more AAV and all that stuff. So he goes there. So it, it, it's no surprise Saquon's not a giant anymore. Okay. Right. Um, and he went, you know, with the money and, and God bless him. You know, like I said, I wasn't too crazy about that goodbye either. I thought it, I expected a little bit more from. Saquon. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it was very generic, very but, generic. Look, but look, if you think Saquon still didn't hold a grudge against the Giants after being tagged last before last season and him feeling he didn't get his money, you're sadly mistaken. Yeah, okay? right. he did. He he still didn't like what happened last year, and and he went on to the Eagles, and and it's part of the business, man. What are you going to do? I mean, from what I understand, down in Philly, a lot of Philly people are not too happy with this contract. They think they overpaid for Saquon Barkley. Yeah, I've been hearing that from down there, you know. But whatever, we'll see. Uh, Saquon, I'm sure, will do well, you know, with the Eagles. Um, and now there's the you, latest rumor, Chris, that 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 Roseman uh, that uh, yeah. Roseman spoke to Barkley during the the, the tampering period, yeah. which is a no no. You can speak to the agent. Can't do that. Um, that's what James Franklin, Penn State head coach, said. I don't know. We'll see what happens there. The yeah. Eagles, Eagles kind of said that's that's bullshit. We only spoke to the agent. I don't know uh, who was that Barry from uh, CAA. So, uh, well, whatever you know. Um, so Barkley got the big money that he was yeah. looking for. It's basically the yeah. same contract he turned down in twenty two from the Giants. Right. And the fact is that Saquon. He thought he was going to get Ed McCaffrey number a couple years ago because I, I'm going to say this in a respectful way, okay? Because hmm? I always love Saquon, so I'm not I am not putting down Saquon at all. But the fact of the matter is, is, Saquon thinks he's a great back, and he thinks he's on the same level as McCaffrey, and he should have been paid like Ed McCaffrey, okay? No matter what he said afterwards, oh God, you know McCaffrey's great, all that. but Saquon feels he's a great back, and he should be paid like a great back, and paid like a guy like Christian McCaffrey. And, 
And the fact is, he's not a great back, Saquon. He's a very good back. He's not a great back. He's not Christian McCaffrey. Well, you've been saying that for a long time, to your, to your credit, or on a lot of podcasts. He's not Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey. He's not getting that money. He's not getting that money. He was never getting that money, and nobody yeah. else gave him that money, even this year. You know, the Eagles yeah. gave him the 12-plus and all that. Okay, whatever. There was really nobody off in 12-plus except for the Eagles. Like I said, Yusuf, when I understand, Houston was in on him pretty good. And they were off in around 11 and all that stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's the fact is that, you know, God bless Saquon. And I mean this in a – I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but the fact of the matter is that Saquon does think he's an absolute great back and he should be paid like it. And right. that means McCaffrey type 16 plus right. and all that stuff. Um, and he's not a great back. And he didn't yeah. get paid like McCaffrey because he's not Christian McCaffrey. That's the bottom line. He's not right. Christian. He's not Adrian Peterson back in the day. He is not that type of back. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, but he got paid like a very good back because he is a very good back. But the Giants, Jerry, I put it on Twitter the other day. Joe Shane has a way of building a football team, and it's a lot like what he did up in, what they did up in Buffalo. Yeah. And they're going to pay the premium positions. Mm-hmm. That's it. And and you see them doing that. Yeah. Okay. They won't pay. I've been saying this for two years. I argue with a guy. I've been arguing with a guy for two freaking years in the Giants building who kept telling me that, oh, I don't know. I don't, they're not going to lose Saquon. I was like, I've been telling this person for two years, guy, they're not paying Saquon. That's much. They're going to be losing if, he does, if, if Saquon doesn't get that money, he's going to walk. Right. He, he walked. Uh, I mean, Shane, they were going to a certain number, mm-hmm. and that was it. Yeah. They have a team to build here, and a running back is not something in their philosophy. It's important. It's not a premium position. So right. the, look at the, what they've done, what Joe Shane has done with the premium positions, okay? You went out, you drafted one in the cornerback of Tate Banks, might draft another one, okay? Or might even sign a veteran coming up here soon. Cornerback, premium position. Mm-hmm. Left tackle extends Andrew Thomas. Yep. Right? Yeah. I mean, so what do you got to work on? Oh, edge. Well, he just addressed – he. Joe Sheen has addressed edge twice. Right. One through the draft with Thibodeau. Yep. And now he goes out and makes a blockbuster trade for Brian Burns. So edge, premium position, he's addressed that. So now Joe has to work on the quarterback thing. We'll see what happens. And the wide receiver thing where one or the other, they're going to get probably at number six or move up or whatever it might be. It's going to be a quarterback or if if it doesn't work, wide receiver at six. So they're going to address that too. Yeah. Okay. So that's the way they're going to build a team, Jerry. You know, they're not going to pay a safety. Although they do, you know, they were looking to get Zay back, but they're not going to pay a safety seventeen million dollars. It wasn't happening. Yeah, I think my okay. guess was. Uh, I think my guess was. What did I say? Four years, eighty million, fifty-five guarantee. So I was way off. What yeah. Did? So. <laughs> um. So, um, yeah, the number from what I understand was around fourteen. That's what they were looking to go. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it. obviously the Packers came up with 17. Zay was looking for like 18, 17, 19, right around there. He got the 17. Yeah. Uh, and God I, guess, bless I him. guess if I was his agent, I would have said go for 20 because that's where I thought they were. I had no idea. I just thought that's where they were going. Um, but at, by the end of the day, um, yeah, mm-hmm. listen, we, we lost lost McKinney, lost Barkley, but you said it. They, they, they're investing in certain positions and, and running back and safety don't cut it no matter how much you think of McKinney and you know, also with the new defensive coordinator coming in, the safety being featured, I just thought McKinney was a natural, um, easy well, they decision. They did want him to back, Jerry. They did want yeah, him back. No, but... and I get it. I get it. I, again, I wasn't, it wasn't like the walk over the bridge. They just took Daniel Jones losing my mind, mad. It was like, ah, man. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. And they bring in two guards. And by the end of the day, um, it was a, it was a positive day, Chris, my God, um, bringing in Brian, Brian Burns. But, um, we have uh we have our guests waiting backstage, two of them. Bring I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring them in. There we go. What's up, guys? What's up, fellas? Oh, man, we How made we it doing? to the big leagues, man. We made it to we the made big it. leagues. We made it. Eli Spiro in the What's house. Up, Chris? Where's What's your up, boy? Where's your, where's your third party? Yeah, he's gonna be fashionably late. He's, he's, he's fashionably late, huh? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, you know, uh, it's, the, it's, it's El Chefe today. You know, that's what you guys. Yeah, El, El Chefe. Chefe. <laughs> a little late. I did a little barbecue myself today, a little late. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful it's day out. Eli, if you want to, you want to introduce yourself and Spiro the way you're always doing your podcast. Feel free, bro. 
<laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man. Of course, man, it's your boy Eli Rax, aka Vibes, man. And of course, I'm hanging out with the Giant Insider, and of course, I got my brother, Mr. Glass Half Full, is gonna be up next. Introduce yourself, brother. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I, I can't Jordan. pull that off. I can't pull that yeah. off. So nice job, yeah. Eli. Uh, <laughs> if you nasty, we, we couldn't have pulled that. Off. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, and that's me. If you nasty now, he's, he's, he's got the perfect roll, MC I mean? voice flow, yeah. and yeah. that's why he's. It, it just doesn't feel right whenever he's not there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I actually I actually watched you last night and I thought I'm gonna practice this. I'm like, it's just gonna come off so corny. <laughs> it, can't, it can't be replicated. <laughs> no, never duplicated. Appreciate so, it, man. Appreciate it. Gentlemen, no uh appreciate you jumping on and you know, have coming come in a little bit. Um appreciate you having you on. Uh we, we love your work, you know that guys. You know, um, love you guys. I've been on Vice your versa. podcast, it's Vice been it's all good stuff. You know, you guys are very popular, you do a great job, let me tell you. So but gentlemen, before you know, you guys came on. Me and Jerry would talk about the events of Monday, uh, mm. the you know the the legal illegal tampering period. Uh, yeah. So right. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, you know, it's amazing, fellas. How it's amazing how the the uh, tampering period starts at twelve o'clock on Monday. The Andre Swift was done about fifteen seconds later. Yeah. Mm. How's that I mean, work? the whole great offer. Great the whole offer. Even... The NFL with this illegal <laughs> tampering. You know, I mean, the tampering and all legal. It's period. just it's a so joke. So they got to look into that down the road because these deals are done at the combine. They were done this month. Anyway, what's fellas, we're going to get your opinion. I agree. You know, we were talking about Saquon, you know, obviously, and uh, Enze, McKinney. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know what, guys? You know, what did you feel? How did you feel about Saquon? We'll go. Let's we'll start with Saquon. I'm going to get into something with McKinney in a little bit, but we'll start with Saquon. Uh, guys, how did you feel when the news broke? Did you think Saquon was going to stay, or did you feel he was on his way out? Do you want to go first? Get it, get it. If you don't mind, it's up to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, jump in. Get um, listen, I'll tell you this, man. I I'll tell you this, right? You know, at the end of the season, when they do their, I guess their final uh, interviews and etc. I believe it was in the media, right? I mean, you guys can can agree or not, or let me know. But Saquon didn't meet with those guys. He was like, they know where to mm. find me, basically. You yeah. know what I mean? So right there was kind of a writing on a wall for me that okay, I was right there when he said trouble. that. Yeah. No, I remember, I remember you were there. That, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So I thought there was trouble in paradise, you know, then at that time. So, you know, just how that transpired and him saying that, I was just like, OK, you know, he's not going to come back. I mean, I kind of knew him my plums. I wanted him to. I, I love him. He's one of my favorite players being on his team at the time. So, you know, I was just like, you know what? I don't know if he's going to come back, man. This thing is probably 70, 30 right now that he, mm. he's probably gone. And. So be it, man. You know, he got out of Dodge, and I think uh, the Eagles paid the money that he was looking for. And I, I think it was too rich for the Giants at the end of the day. Uh, you know, at, at this point, it, it sucks to see him go, but we wasn't doing much winning with him here. You know, so, you know, it was just time, and uh, it ran its course. And uh, like I said, he, he got paid, man. So more power to him. You're an Eagle. We can't root for you no more, buddy. Sorry. Sorry, Saquon. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I, I echo that. I, For me, I was ready – it was like a toxic – watching you know, your, one of your good friends back in high school and him being in a – you like the girlfriend, you like your best friend, but it was a toxic relationship. that They, they just were better off right like, like apart. And it got to the point where it's just like they tried. They tried. They keep, kept trying to stay together. And then it just was like, you know what? They both had, had realized they need to go their separate ways. And I think it was a mutual thing. Um, I hate where he landed. I hate where he landed, you know, um, but – Listen, if that was the highest offer, which I don't even know if it was the highest offer. Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. Texans maybe might have had a, a higher offer. Is that is that? Is I that heard true? Texans were like 11 plus, and then the Eagles came in with a little bit higher. Okay. That's what okay. I heard. So, all right. So, he took the highest offer. Can't blame the man for that. Can't blame him for that. But, you know, it was uh, unfortunately for Saquon, he's the face of Gettleman and the losing. And unfortunately, it all fell on him. And he needed a fresh slate. The, the Giants needed a fresh slate. I always, we always talk about invest in the running game not the running back. So we were fine with it. You know, we were fine. Uh, I think we were, I, I, I was personally generally fine with the, the way they uh, went about it. And they just don't, like you said, Chris, just before, they don't value the running back that much. We're learning now. This is now Joe Shane's actual team. We're learning what he values most. It was, it was almost shocking. To, it was almost it was shocking to see the back. Eagles do it too. Of all the teams to do it, right. it's kind of surprising that they did it. Like yeah. a team that has valued the line so much and kind of done mm. it the way that you should do it. All of a sudden, they made that move. And Chris, real quick before we go on, since we're on the Saquon subject, two giant goofballs ask what Led Zeppelin song sums up best how you felt. Uh, this is an easy one. 
hey, hey, what can I do? So <laughs> there, you, there you go, Chris. Yeah, Sorry, buddy. You know. <laughs> I guess so, right? Hey, hey, what so, can you? What can so, we, so for those of you who don't know, Chris asked me top five. I said, hey, hey, what can I do is up there. And Chris was like, you're not a Zeppelin fan. So for those of you who know that joke. So anyway. Yeah, I, 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 I want to ask you guys, uh, yeah. it, 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 does it feel like, you know, and we were talking about this on another, uh, another show earlier today. Does it feel like you could say uh, once a giant, always a giant about Saquon Barkley? No. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. I'm not mad at that. Because that's the same thing we were saying today. Yeah. Man, is it? Once a giant, it doesn't apply. It has to be like, like there's the no sustained that, su success. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> and I don't think he made a significant dent. Like, it's just one playoff, well, and he missed a lot of games, unfortunately. And I'm gentlemen, not gentlemen to I'm going to ask you guys, even Jerry, you could jump in this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get to, if I had to ask you guys, who had their heart in it more and actually coming back to being a giant again? Mm. Xavier McKinney or Saquon Barkley? Who would McKinney. you tell? McKinney. McKinney yeah, hands down. Without a doubt. Jerry, because he came back, right? He came back with the to to get another offer from the Giants. Yes, I, I don't Jerry? think McKinney had the axe to grind as much as Saquon, so I would say McKinney barely, but not a lot. General, barely, gentlemen, I'm going to tell you this, and I'm not knocking Saquon. I always love Saquon. I'm not. I'm not one of those guys. Now he's not there. No, sure. he's, Saquon was this. Saquon was that. That's bullshit. Saquon's a class act. Okay. Oh yeah. But gentlemen, he didn't truly have his heart in being a giant coming back this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could tell you that right now. Mm. What happened yeah, to him last year, he just did not like. Okay. Now, I'm not saying if the Giants came in and offered him 12 plus and then with the guaranteed he wasn't coming back. Of course he was. But Saquon had no problem moving on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. It wasn't like he sat there and he didn't even go back to the Giants and say, listen, the Eagles offered me 12. Yeah. Guys, you want to kick it up to 10, 11? We could work mm -hmm. on guaranteed. We could work in it. It was over. He just right. Wow. He, he was gone. You know what I mean? Um, so Saquon did not like what happened to him last off season. Okay. And and I hate to say this, but Saquon, and you guys know because you follow. I've been saying this for two years. His agents effed him yep. big mm -hmm. time last year. Oh, yeah. And you guys you saw that. the stuff I put on Twitter. Change your agent. She is yep. screwing you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. He finally did. Bo, bo, bo. He didn't get. He basically turned down the contract he got from the Eagles two years from in twenty two from the Giants. He basically turned that down. This is basically what he got from the Eagles. Maybe a little bit more here and there, whatever. But he basically turned down the same contract, right? So, so Saquon, look, guys, I don't know if you remember this, but when Saquon finally, when he reported, right, he didn't hold out. He reports, and he's up and he's at the podium and he's talking to us, right, uh, at camp. And I remember he said, "Well, you know, I was thinking about holding out." Blah, blah, blah. I don't know if you remember. I asked him. I said, Saquon, hold on. I'll never forget. It was like, no more questions. I was like, hold on. Wait a minute. And Dion, uh, the PR guy goes, okay. And I said, Saquon, are you saying you would actually hold out the beginning of the season? Is that what you mean? And he okay. looked at me. I don't know if you remember this guy. He went. Yeah. He looked at me. He goes, yeah. I, yeah, I, I was. I, I was. You remember, Jerry, when he did that? Yeah, I do. I remember uh -huh. that. Yep. Uh -huh. I remember. I, I said remember. to myself, fellas, right there, I said to myself, whoa. He's going to play this year because Saquon's a class act. He wasn't going yeah. to hold out, and he was going to play under the tag and all that. But I'm saying mm. to myself, right then, fellas, I said, he's out. Oh, he's not. Yeah. He's not happy. Yeah. And if something happens in the next year, he's going to walk. You know. Why does it feel and, like he's he's salty about the Giants though? Right. Like I, because I guys, I, I'm going to tell you this, and I was just talking with Jerry Bliss before you came on the air, and I love look. This is not a knock on Saquon. I am not. Sure. Not no. And and, and and real quick, Chris, so so people know you you've you've sung his praises through the years as a locker room leader Saquon takes the time. losses hard he's a giant absolutely. blah 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 so absolutely. go ahead a leader in a locker room a class yeah. act all the yeah. way I love saquon always will always yeah. will mm. but fellas saquon also feels he's a absolute great running back yeah. that should be paid mm. like it and what i mean by that is like he's like that mccaffrey type 16 mm. he feels he's the same way and that's the way he should be paid and guys this is the bottom line Saquon Barkley is a, a very good back. He is not a great back. Hmm. You could disagree, whatever. I'm just telling you, my I opinion. He is not a Christian McCaffrey is a great back. That's a damn yes. great back. Saquon yeah. is not a great back. That's the You're bottom right. line. And he was right. not getting that money. He didn't get it two years ago. He didn't get it in this free agency. He actually wanted to get into this free agent market to see how high he could go. And if he get close to Christian, he didn't get close to Christian. Mm -hmm. Okay. And because he's not Christian, okay, he's not 
He's a very good back. Not a great. He's not an Adrian Peterson in his prime no. and all that stuff. So God bless him. He did get his money and all that stuff. But Saquon always felt he was a the best back in the league and he should be paid like it. I, yeah. I there's no doubt in my mind about that. Okay. So it, it he's not. Okay. So, but God bless him. He'll move on to fill up. Guys, I remember back in the day when Bavaro played for the Eagles. You know what I mean? It happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It happens. It's disgusting. That was towards I, the end of I, his career, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. No, it, it was late. Yeah. I remember yeah, he, called, and he wore that horrible number 84 for them, right. too. Right. I, I don't even. I blocked it out of my brain almost. Yeah. So that. Call Banks, Banks played for the Redskins for Redskins. I mean, yeah. I, and to this day, I still I break that. calls chops about that. You know, I can't the Redskins. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so yeah. it happens. I get it happens, but. That's the way it is. And the, the, the well, difference with those guys is they put in so much more time too. Right. Like, right. You know what I mean? Like, like and they Banks, won. They right. won here. That's a good that's a good point. But like Jesse Armstead, right? He finished his career with the Redskins, right? Yeah. But yeah. you wouldn't think of that. But he put in so much time, was an absolute warrior and played so many years. Saquon played what six years, five six, whatever it was, six years. Yeah. And he didn't any oh, a thousand yards three times, was injured for a lot of it. Guys, we're gonna take a break real quick. We're gonna be back with the folks from New York Revival, guys. Hang on one second. And we're back, folks. Listen to the Giant Insider Podcast with Jerry Foley and Chris, nobody beats the biz, biz Ignano, and Eli and Mr. Glass Half Full Spiro from New York Revival. All right. So we talked about Saquon. If we want to talk about McKinney, we can. Let's, I, I want to kind of pivot to some positives, right? And, and, and signing guards and bringing right. in Brian Burns. And, you know, what were your thoughts there, guys? Like, just, just lay it out there. Like, were you as stunned as I was that Brian Burns was a thing? Like, I, and Chris, maybe you knew, but I was going back and forth. I wasn't going to bother you that day, but it was like, Brian Burns, like, where'd this come from? Well, let us let me quickly, and then you guys could jump in, okay? E, oh, zero. Yeah. One of the reasons why they weren't going to go very high with McKinney is because the Brian Burns thing was in the works, okay? Mm -hmm. This was this just didn't happen Monday afternoon. We call up Dan Morgan. Let's do this. Okay. No, this was in the works. I heard about this like five or six days after the tag, okay? Mm -hmm. The Brian Burns thing was in the works. So, the, guys, uh, if people don't, wanna, don't understand, Joe knew he was going to be paying an edge guy big money. It was coming down the pike. It was mm -hmm. in the works. It looked like it was going to happen. It happened. So, Joe knew he was going to have to give that money to the edge guy. He was only going to give so much to McKinney. They wanted McKinney back, guys. They wanted McKinney. McKinney even reached out to them, okay? Yes. McKinney wanted to be back. Mm -hmm. It didn't. Like, the Giants had a number, and it wasn't going to go to 17. They had to pay the edge. See, it was behind us. They, they knew they were going to be paying Brian Burns. They knew this was coming down the pike. This was in the works for Brian Burns, and they just weren't going to pay the safety like McKinney. Even as talented as, as X is, they weren't going to pay him that money, man. They were paying the edge guy. They knew it was coming. They knew they were going to work out this deal. It was a very good chance to work it out. As we all know, Monday they worked it out. Yeah. Getty. No, I, I, total, I totally agree. I mean, um, just to make this clear, guys, just to make this clear, because I said on Revival that, hey, we had the scoop before it was even released a few days before. No, the biz is not the source, guys. Relax. You guys are my DMs <laughs> saying, hey, Chris is the source. He's a, he is not. He is a great friend of mine, but he's not the source. And if he was, you never know anyway. But here's the point. Yes. yes. Be, you're good in this business, buddy. You'll be I'm very working. good. You, you taught me. You taught me. But that's another <laughs> conversation. That's another conversation. But uh, but all honestly speaking, yes, this was in the works. So, you know, you understand that Xavier McKinney wasn't going to get that type of money because we knew Brian Burns was going to come in here and then we're going to have to pay him as well to extend him. Great contract. Um, I, you're, pay, you're playing for that player that's going to come in and give you that that disruption that you're looking for in that line. So with him coming down and being paid that contract, and he's a tender age of 25, 26, I believe, next month, this guy's going to come in and wreck things. And, and what about Kayvon Thibodeau as well that's going to help him out in that in that area as well? Kayvon should come alive because you got another person that's going to wreck the game as well. And his defensive coordinator that, that – that they, that we have now, it's going to remind you of the Perry Fuel, the, the Steve Spagnolo. And I'm not trying to say those are the shoes he has and he fits them, but I'm telling you, as far as like that front four going after it and then playing a run as a secondary, you got to love this signing. You got to love this trade here, guys. I'm telling you, it's going to be that New York Giants of old. I loved it. I love every minute. Like that penny is going to be well worth it, at least I hope and I expect it to be. But again, man, I, I wish uh, Xavier McKenney so much luck, man. Again, it, it, to pay him that much, I don't think. Talented guy. I'm not trying to poo-poo on him, but I think you can find another safety via the draft or maybe a veteran outcome in free agency and do the job for you because that front 
is going to get to that quarterback this year, in my opinion. But correct me if I'm wrong. And, and I'm going to go out on a limb right now, guys. I will say it. You can laugh at me months from now. I'm a huge Dane Belton fan. I've been mm. for for about a year now. I know that he's not been in the good graces all the time. But when he's in, he makes plays. I'm not saying he's McKinney. But I'm telling you right now, I'm rooting for Dane Belton. I love his game. It is what it is. Laugh at me five, six months hey. from now, whatever. So. You know it's gonna um, help Dane Belton, uh, yeah. a, a great pass rush. <laughs> right, that's right. gonna make Dane Belton yeah. oh, even yeah. better. Oh yeah, it helps anyone. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, someone's appearing, folks. You know, oh, right. oh, look who it is! Oh, How we doing, boys? Great oh, my session, oh my god! <laughs> Welcome, Jerry in the bits. How <laughs> we doing, man? Welcome. Thanks for good having now. Good, man. We just got into some Barkley stuff, and we got into we're getting into McKinney stuff, and. Brian Burns and all the good stuff that's been happening, brother. So, love it, love it. You know what, Hefe, since you just jumped in, brother, let's get you quickly, you know, let's get your Barkley reaction. You know, what did you think when it happened? Did you think Saquon would be back? Um, and were you surprised? Give us all the stuff you, you were thinking. A uh, little shock factor that he goes to the Eagles, obviously, but I thought the Giants did the right thing by not um, giving him that deal. They, it's From what I heard, they didn't even offer – uh, a deal when he got a few uh, from the outside. So I like, I, <laughs> sorry, uh, I'm down. Um, I like the giant stance on this. This is kind of what I was hoping for. As as great a player as Saquon is, the Giants are in a different place than the Eagles. That I feel like that's a luxury position to to pay, and uh, and the Giants are just not there. So I like, I really like what the Giants have done so far in free agency. Oh. And the le the level headedness is really just overwhelming. Like I, it seemed like it, it was Twitter and, and social media and everything wasn't as insane as I thought it was going to be. I mean, look, they're all everybody's made it went to yeah. the Eagles, but what everyone's opinion seems to be, all right, we knew this was going to happen. It sucks went to the Eagles. It is what it is. But go ahead, Hefe. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're good. Uh, that's it. But I fully expect Saquon to get booed every time he touches oh, yeah. the ball when he plays in MetLife. <laughs> sure. And as much as some some fans will still love and respect him i think drunk giant fans are different <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to ask you guys this real quick what does this signing say for philly are, are, are they doing this to get the best out of hurts are they doing this to stick it to the giants can i, can um, I go first on that go one? for it sure what do you got yeah, yeah. they trade they traded up to get Devonte smith they sat their players so we wouldn't win the division mm. um <laughs> there's another one in there um oh he sets the guard market Monday morning by signing Landon yeah. Dickerson. Okay. So if there's, if you don't think there's an element of getting at the Giants, which is what really needles me living, you know, exit eight off the turnpike around so many Eagle fans, and you're crazy. Like there's, it's an extra element for them. So it's not the sole reason, but it is an extra. Ah, uh, we got him again. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I, I have to think that. It's almost like they had, they knew what they needed to do, but it, if it if they stick it to the Giants in the process, it's, it's an all added better. Bonus. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yep. you know, it's the Giants or Dallas, so well, watch it. Yeah. Division. If they can stick it to the division opponent, yeah. It you know it just I mean? seems like it happens with us more. That's well, all. You, you know, about the Giants. It's up to the Giants now. Front office per personnel to turn that around. Right. right? It's, it's got to be the Eagles. We've been on the losing end. How you turn it around is that you start. Drafting better plays, it's not beating them on the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be, okay. I mean, great. Gettleman was slow at the switch with the Devonta Smith thing, right? He was slow at the yeah. switch. I mean, you know, he's the only guy that didn't see it coming. They do it, you know. He fell asleep. That, the that's the great thing with it. With uh, it seems like so, as uh, you know, Art Stapleson said this: like Shane won't lie to you, but he won't tell you that he he, he just hmm. keeps his mouth shut. Mm -hmm. He and he goes about his business like a, an assassin behind the scenes and mm -hmm. gets the job done. We didn't see the Wallard trade coming like mm -hmm. we we didn't see k bond getting drafted so i have no clue what they're gonna do at six right now and i love it like i i have no clue are they gonna trade up are they you know you heard rumors they like the quarterback but like we don't know guys good. yeah we don't we don't know which one guys, I, don't don't know, know. I don't care well who goes out there and is saying crap yeah. oh we hear this we hear this oh sources are saying nobody guys knows nobody knows what the hell they're thinking in that Sorry. You, you know what else biz Sorry. is yeah they don't even know because they don't know what's going to happen in front of them yet. Exactly. They're, 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 yeah, exactly right. they're trying they to plan even... for all these different scenarios. So how do they know what they're going to do if they don't know who's available? I had, I had a friend of mine tell me the other day, he he was in the building and he was at, he was in a cafeteria and a lot of guys came walking. I'm not going to have a lot of guys from the giants came walking in that players, you know, personal uh, front office people and JJ McCarthy's name popped up. And there's some, a guy I know goes, Yo, I'm hearing a lot of stuff about JJ. And the guy yeah. looked at him and goes, 
look, we haven't even started putting the draft board. We don't know where the hell this shit comes from. You know, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, 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 yeah, we look at JJ. Yeah, we, yeah, he, you know, he's a pretty good player, but we don't know what the hell. You know, they haven't even started their draft board yet. Free agency mm-hmm. first, yeah. You know what I mean? It's free agency yeah. first. You know, and so it's it's funny. Like, you just don't know what they're thinking. Each that's what makes this sport great, right, guys? One team is going to evaluate this guy one way, and another team is going to evaluate him another way, and all that stuff. You know, so we don't know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I know people out there, oh, the Giants are really hot on J.J. McCarthy. They're going to go with him at six if he's there. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, okay. You know? And that's know. mostly because one person in the media says it, and then everyone picks up on it, and they're like, oh, they must be right. They must know something. And like you said. They probably like a lot knows. of these guys. There's a lot to like about all these quarterbacks. You don't know which one's going to be there. They like May. They like Caleb. They like, you know, uh, like Daniels. They like J.J. I don't know about Penix. That's the one I, I, I don't know. That, that's the wild card for me. But yeah. of course they like him. Yeah. But uh, one thing, you know, happen. guys, one thing Joe Shane said at his presser in the combine, it caught my ear a little bit when he said, hey, there's a lot of good guys in a second round talent, third round mm-hmm. quarterback town. You yeah. remember when he said that? Mm-hmm. And I kind of like, it. whoa, whoa. You know, I kind of like, okay. You know, because Shane, he doesn't really tell you much. <laughs> he doesn't really bullshit. Doesn't yeah. th- but at yeah. his presser, sometimes you pick up on <laughs> things, you know? Good what else? So, he said, uh, we're going to we're gonna look at the draft and free agency. They got they got their free agent. We're gonna look at him in the draft too. He said both. He he, he got it right. I, they, they got Locke. And I want to ask you guys: Does that change anything? Does Locke change any plans? No, no, no. I didn't no. think so either. Look, guys. Look, guys. I can tell you this, guys. They're looking to get a quarterback. They're looking to get a quarterback. Whether or not they could pull this off, in the, you know, with New England or whoever it might be, you know, whatever it might be, Chicago, New England. They're gonna try to get a quarterback. Okay. Or for, those not, they, for those not on YouTube, Spiro is praying. Go ahead, Chris. Or they, yeah. you know, <laughs> if, they, if they grade one of these kids out at six overall talent, like a JJ or a, you know, argument's sake, whatever, somebody else, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That They'll go with it. But they're looking to get a quarterback. They've inquired with the top three teams, fellas, Chicago, mm-hmm. uh, Washington, and New England. They've inquired about what would Up it here. take mm-hmm. to move up, Okay. And so they're like, looking, they're looking. Of course, you know, Joe's never going to say that because if it doesn't happen, he looks like an idiot. You know what I mean? Yeah. So no, and they're gonna, you know, of course they're gonna, oh, the best player available. You know, we're gonna look at this all different position. You know, of course, that's the answer they're gonna give you, you know. But they are they've inquired, they've inquired already about what it would it take to move up. I truly so, believe that's why so Biz, uh, Lock, Biz, Lock no. is here. Lock is here for insurance. He's Geico, yeah, baby. Totally. He he in <laughs> case everything falls through, no trade. You got yourself locked. Hey, what's up, hey, that's that's what I want to know, but, but Biz, quick question. If yeah. you feel like the, if they can't get a top three, if they can't trade up to get it, mm. do you think they'll really take a quarterback at six at that point? Seeming that's a, no, they that's a great question. Top that's a no, great question. No, I think they go wide receiver. I think they go mm. wide receiver. Because if they're trying to move up, why would they take a, a quarterback at six? He's, You're settling. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Right. I, I just said that yeah. earlier today. Yeah. Yep. I agree. No, I, I think agree. I, I don't. That. Me personally, e, mm-hmm. I don't think they have a kid graded out number six overall. Same. Quarterback, I don't think so. I, um, I agree. Makes sense. I, I, from what I hear, they, they do some people like they do like Drake May a lot, but I don't know if they like Daniels better than May, you know, like mm-hmm. that and all that stuff. But look, me personally, I think if mm-hmm. it doesn't work with those top three, if those obviously Chicago looks like they're gonna go Caleb, it looks like definitely Washington's gonna go quarterback. New England could be a wild card in us, but it looks like they're gonna go quarterback. To me, they go wide receiver at six if it's if this doesn't work for them to move up. That's that's what I'm mm. feeling. And Adunze or uh, or neighbors, who, who would they? Who do you think they like a little more? I think they. Like, I'm good with either one. I'm what a good, great. What a great. I don't problem. know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I think they love both. I I think. Yeah. If I had to go with one spirit, I'm gonna go with Adunze. That's who mm. I'm gonna go with. Mm-hmm. If, if that seems like all one. Fit. Yeah. I agree with that. Man, Biz is the man, man. I swear. You're, you're nailing it. <laughs> like, you're nailing it's, it. a Staten Island, it's a Staten Island thing. I don't know what it is. We don't. We don't. How you take it? When the hell you take with the Dinos, guy? You're like ten minutes from oh. now, aren't you? Listen, hey. listen, man. Whenever you're ready, come to the island. <laughs> yeah. and We'll go there, man. Whenever I'm on the island. I'm on the island all the time, but I'm on the South Shore. I know you people think we're all on our own Yo, place on the yeah, South yeah, Shore. Yeah. I know. I know how you start. Yeah. I know you guys in Staten Island. You're all, oh, the South Shore Staten Islands are weird. They're on their own little island. That's the. That's the outer bridge. That's the. That's, that's the outer bridge, right? All right, that's all yeah. I know. Okay, yeah. South Shore is outer bridge. 
And I, I can't believe that the guy's I can't believe the guy's name was Outer Bridge. That blew my mind. Yeah. It's named after oh, it's a guy. Not a, it's not an outer, outer bridge. bridge. It's his, no. that's his name. Right. I thought it was the Outer Bridge from Jersey. Wait, I was serious? like, what? That's what I thought too. That's you're the guy. Yes. That was the yes. cat's name. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. That was, there you go. I thought, that was, I thought that was a dad joke right so, there. <laughs> no, gentlemen, no, let's no. get into some more free Nice. Uh, yeah, please. The Giants bad made joke. Splash, right? They got they Brian Burns. We all know that. But they also addressed the offensive line, right? Something that Shane said he was basically going to do. Right? We're going to be. We got to get some guys in here. So they, they go out and they sign a guy, ten million, John Runyon Jr. Right? And they go and they also sign a, a tackle, Jermaine. E, I'm call him like sure. <laughs> I'm never gonna try to. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll, I'll let him all whatever. The same. E. But you know, so to me, all right, I'm gonna give what I take out of this. Okay, and I put this on Twitter the other day. I think Evan Neal's gonna go into camp as the right tackle, but I think it's gonna be a very short leash. Mm-hmm. Okay, because you got Jermaine there. I think it's gonna be if Neal looks like Neal. I hate to say it. Get him inside. Mm. Get your man on the right tackle, okay? Um, that's, that's the way Brasillo, I think. Brasillo's boy, too. That's the, yeah, you're right. Yeah, right, right. That's, that's right. The way the I Raiders. Look at, that's yeah. the way I look at it. Uh, look, Jermaine played God a lot for the Ravens, played tackle yeah. for the Ra- Vegas. He could do both. Um, I, I love his excitement. I mean, I, you look at him on Twitter, right? The dude, like, he's so right. excited. I, by the way, Brian Burns, we were on with Burns this afternoon. On a Zoom, and man, he's fired up too. He's another guy. It looks like nice. he's like fired up to be here. He can't wait to get rolling. You know, he thinks him and Tibbs are going to be a very good combo. And he, mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys saw, but he told us he goes, "Man, we got a bunch of dogs on this team. We got a, yeah. got dogs that are next to me with Dex, Tibbs, mm-hmm. uh, and he goes, and we got a dog as a linebacker. We all know he's talking about Bobby, right? So, yeah. So um, he's really pumped up too. But Jermaine, guys, I'm sure you've seen it right on Twitter. This guy is fired up. Every, every, he seems like he's throwing a tweet out there every two minutes. Yeah. Can't wait to be, get yeah. going. So, Fantastic. Yeah, he was genuine too. Mm-hmm. Now let's get the Evan Neal. Do you feel he's a he's the right tackle going into camp? Do you think he's the guy, or he or they just slide him over to guard from day one? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, what, how you feel about that? I'll let you guys go first, man. Huh? Yeah, Hefe, I mean, jump, Hefe, jump in. Hefe, there. go. Yeah, on, I agree with you. I think he's going to get the nod at the beginning of camp. You know, you were our seventh overall pick. You were born a tackle. Well, then fucking play like a tackle. Let's, <laughs> let's see it, man. And it's his job to lose, basically. And like you said, now we have other people and other options. So if you're not cutting it, then he's going to go to guard or, or the bench. They're not going to let him just be a turnstile out there. Um, I think he played some guard in Alabama, didn't he? Neil did, yeah. But he, Early on, yeah. yeah. He played, so, a little bit. He yeah. played all so, over, yeah. So that I remember that being one of the things that was attractive about him coming in is his versatility. So he he seemed last year like he'd be he was pissed at the idea of playing guard. But if you wanna if you wanna survive in the NFL, sometimes you got to do that. So whatever's best for the Giants, I don't mm. I don't care. I mean, it would be disappointing because that guy was slated to be like our tackle for the next decade. Like when we drafted him, that's what you thought. You thought you were getting another Andrew Thomas and he hasn't been that. So he's got one more chance. Like this is it. And I, I we said it the other night, he's eligible after this year for an extension, right? He's got to be more motivated than ever to play his best football. So he's got to come in with an edge. And uh, I, if he works out, then our line becomes that much better because then our, our that guy can go play a guard. So i yeah. um, hoping it works out for him. Yeah, man. They, they, listen, his own GM that drafted him at seven put his ass on blast right after the season. He said, you know, he, he's like, he's got to do better. He's got to do better. He put him on blast. And then he he shows him, hey, I'm going to light a fire under your ass and sign someone that's ready to take over your spot. So he's putting all the heat on Neil. And yeah, Victor, Victor says it's hard to switch. You've gotten three years now. I know it's hard, but you got to show something near three, man. And uh, and then stick him out there, give him his last shot. But it's, it's, he, you can't let him sink the season. You can't let Neil sink the season again and sink the offensive line and sink the offense. You gotta you gotta make the switch. And it'll be interesting to see right off the bat on, in camp how much they switch them out first unit mm-hmm. and how much uh, each <laughs> rep gets. That'll be that's be fun to watch. So um, so, so spirits. So Spear is saying, guys, Victor Perez says, Neil's always played left tackle, changing from left to right. It's obscenely hard and takes a lot of years, to, a lot of guys years to do it. And for me, Three. that's why, yeah. that's why I, look, if the if we didn't need a receiver and a quarterback, oh, so then a tackle might be in play. It's all his excuses. It's, yeah, let's go. You need to show some results, man. No, 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 results no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying because of the experience with Neil, 
I'd be scared to scared as hell oh, of taking a left Agreed. tackle in this draft. I mean, like, when okay, you got, you're gonna play right tackle yeah, now. That's all. That's why you can't do that at six, in my opinion. Yeah. You, you can't you can't roll the dice. You can't roll right. the dice. Get, you know, yeah. as far as Evan Neal and 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 the and uh, definitely, I think he'll be out there this summer as far as playing right tackle. But at the end of the day, you know, that should tell you, man. Funny, I'm I'm looking at it right now. How this draft picks are just educated guesses, right? At the end of the day, sure. like it's just like wow. So no matter what, but at the end of the day, man. Um, yeah, I think he's on a short leash. You know, it does take a while to get acclimated. That should show you certain players do take a little bit to get where they need to. Because when you look at Evan Neal's film, film through college, man, he was complete. He was a damn good tackle coming out there. So I really don't know what happened between there. So if this coach can't get him right as of right now this season, yes, then he's in trouble. But at least you got a little bit of an insurance policy coming off the bench or whatever the case is in the veteran. So we'll just we, we'll see, man. But um, I'm, I'm rooting for the kid. I'm really rooting so for him, man. Yeah, Kevin nails it. Kevin McWalter <laughs> says two days, two days versus Burns at practice, and Neil's going to be a guard. All right, guys, we're going to take one more break, and we're going to come back with the folks from New York Revival. <laughs> Hang on one second, <laughs> and we're back, folks. You're listening to the Giant Insider Podcast with Jerry Foley and Chris. Nobody needs to be as busy now, and we have the guys from New York Revival. They do a great job, and you know what? Most importantly, they spread a lot of positivity and good stuff on social media. You guys are awesome, and have to point out. One of you guys do this too. Greg, hey. thanks, buddy. Great stuff. <laughs> hey, got to get the bell on that one. All right. Shout out, man. Shout out, Gregory. Anyway. Thank you, Greg. But no question from Greg. I know. Just, just straight, 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 straight up. You got your money in and you get your, get yeah, your question. Yeah, that guy's in. really we, great. That's we, even we, a question. We call that a just because. Just because yeah. we're doing <laughs> it. Nice. 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 Yeah. Gregory. So, Johnny yeah. Runyon. You know, the old pa- the Packers, yeah. Fowler played for the Eagles, and you know, him and Strahan, old deal. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> not a bad guard, good, pr- pretty good pass pro guard, I tell you, man. Yeah, always kind of like he plays left guard, right guard. So, you know, he'll do a lot of course training in camp too with Jermaine, Neil, <laughs> and all yeah. that stuff. So, <laughs> only two guys that'll be set going into camp is going to be John Michael Schmitz and Angel at left tackle. Anybody else is going to be a course training to cross. You know, <laughs> don't forget, you got a Zudu in the mix too, right? He's coming back. Yeah. You, know, you got McKethin in the mix and all that stuff, you know, working in there. Yeah. Well, I do. I guess Joe will agree with me because I've been telling Jerry on this podcast for a while. I said, please, can we stop with the McKethin and Zudu? Stop. Yeah. When people are like, well, we got the next year. We got those two. Guys, please stop. If you look yeah. at Cut your losses. He's a body. You know, so yeah. obviously Joe, obviously Joe was agreeing with me there. He, he put in Runyon and, you yeah. know, and Jermaine and all that stuff. And, and look, you got draft picks too coming up, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if it's not quarterback, fellas, um, like I said, I think they go receiver. E, you think they go receiver at six if it's not a quarterback in the first round? E, go ahead. Receiver? Yeah, you know, in the first round, receiver, man. Edge, if, go ahead. What do you think? Yeah, if, if it's not a quarterback, man, they're definitely going to go a wide receiver, in my opinion. It's just a matter of it's uh, either neighbors or the other gentleman there. But um, l- listen, man. I think the Giants have to be sold on a guy. This, this, at this point in this time in their tenure, as far as Joe Shane and Brian Dayball, they cannot play around when it comes to a quarterback. So either you go get your guy, and if he's not there, then okay, we're going to try to figure out something for the next season or if possible veteran at this point. Can't get too cute. So at that point, if you can't trade up, best player available, and I think it'll be actually that number one receiver we are finally going to have and give Daniel Jones a little bit more of a target to throw out there. And uh, let's see what happens. You cross your fingers and just pray that everything think, goes well. E, do you think <laughs> – E, I'm going to ask each one of you guys. E, do yeah. you feel the Giants have moved on from Daniel Jones? <sighs> Biz, you want to know something crazy, Biz? And and you could correct, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, you could correct you could correct me here, Biz, because hey, I've been no, I've been getting. Opinion. I'm not correcting that. <laughs> I, I and and, and I, I'll give you my opinion first, and then I yeah. I I'll go another notch here. Um, I I think they moved on from from Daniel Jones for sure, but as I talk to certain people behind the scenes of it. I hear different stories, so I'm not really sure. Stop and Biz, it. I don't know. Maybe you can can give your opinion as well. But uh, I, I think the Giants actually moved on from the quarterback position. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I've been, at I've been least, saying that. at I least I would want them to because it's just the best ability is availability. Yeah. And if let's it cannot be there, I, you got to move on. Hey, you let's put on. it this way: and I, there was when Daniel played last year. There was a lot of stuff he put on film they didn't like. That I could tell you. Mm. Okay. There was stuff that he put on film that they just didn't like. Okay. Now, 
Do I feel they moved on from him? Yeah, but at the same time, if this quarterback thing doesn't work out, guess what? Daniel's the quarterback next September, right? So yeah. we got to get this guy better. Yeah. <laughs> what better guy to do than Dable? We've seen that in 2022, right? We've seen Daniel play well. Do I think they've moving on and they want their own guy? Yes, absolutely. If it doesn't mm. work, then guess what? Hey, Dave's, this is your guy now, right? We're not going with Drew Locke in September. This is your guy. Yeah. So we got to try to get that 22 Daniel back, right? Looks like they'll, they'll get him that outside threat, that X guy, right? And then we got to try to get this guy because he's our guy in 24. Uh, Spiro, have the Giants moved on from Daniel, you feel? Yes. I, 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 I listen. I, I'll stick. I'll go to my grave thinking this, but uh, I think that ultimately, in, the, in their heart of hearts, DJ was a favorite to Mara and the the the, the higher ups. Kind of when they went when they came in, they said, "Listen, we didn't. I got. We're going to give him a, a deal. There's an hour and two years. We're going to give him essentially his fifth year, and, and you know the fifth year looked disastrous. You know, right off the bat, um, before he got hurt." And then you sprinkle on a, a second neck, neck injury and uh, an ACL injury, mm-hmm. and it's easy to see that that they're they're just done. Um, and they're, they're why not? You know, for job security purposes, why not at least have a, a great safety net? Uh, uh, you know, to in case now you can play both sides of it. And they're they're playing it great in the in the media. They say they still love him. They say he's the starter in case things fall apart and you have to go back to him. And you know they will will go back to, but he is now the backup plan. DJ, I think in my mind is clearly the backup plan. Yeah. And uh, and one one thing about Runyon, Runyon got screwed by the way. Runyon got screwed because he was the first signing when we expected Hunt or Owenu, and Giants fans were all excited. And then they see John Runyon come up, and everybody's you know it, everybody was so deflated. We didn't see the bigger plan yet. So Runyon, solid signing. People under it was underrated because of when he signed. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I gotta be honest with you guys. That Robert Hunt contract was insane. Oh, ridiculous. And who's the other big guard? Who's the other big guard they signed to? Uh, another um there was two big the two guards that got ridiculous contracts. Robert Dickerson Hunt who, got r- a ridiculous Dickerson. No, Dickinson. Yeah, there was another guard though, a free agent signing. Jonah. Who? No, Jonah Jackson. Yeah, I mean, maybe it was Jonah Jackson. He signed yeah, to Carolina yeah. too, right? I gotta look. Says, anyway, says, yeah. I, there was two. You, I was like, wow, Robert Hunt got that money. I couldn't believe. It. Oh, Hunter. Money, you know, so. Um, yeah. can I jump in on? Uh, yes. Daniel, yeah, Daniel, now, Jones, Pepe, Daniel Jones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Real quick. You think they moved on? Tell you really feel. I think for the first time they are planning for life beyond Daniel Jones. Instead of this red carpet treatment that he has had, he's never had. Like even when they, there was no reason to pick up his fifth year option. Like that was public. They could have picked up his fifth year. They said we haven't seen enough to do that. Let's roll the dice with him. But you bring in Tyrod, Tyrod, who has been an NFL starter. In my opinion, why not make that a competition right from the beginning? Like this is they do that sometimes at camp. Let the let the best man win. Um, and you can make the argument Tyrod had a better camp. So it's interesting what would have happened that way. But at this point, you got Drew Locke coming in. The money for Daniel Jones is spent either way, right? So you want to put your best football team out there. I don't think Locke is any kind of long term answer. But if you're looking for a veteran bridge, why not say if, if DJ is completely healthy that this is a competition? And if nothing else, let the best man win because I think it's clear what their plan is. The only thing that's kind of hanging over them, and, and Biz, maybe you know more about this, the injury clause. I wonder if that is weighing on them. If DJ has another season-ending injury, he's owed <laughs> like another full 40, 50 in, in the following year. Like that is what that is not how the contract was meant to be structured. No. <laughs> you know, so and I don't know how Yikes. man, we this was a bad contract, guys. Like it was bad. And that injury clause makes it worse because the injury thing was a concern. And and his agent managed to dance around that issue and and completely secure a huge bag on top of getting a outrageous annual rate for, for DJ. But so Jeff, sh- let's just make it make it bad for one year, right? You can only it, it only has to be bad for this year. It wasn't bad year one. It, it, it it's gonna be bad bad now. So let's let's end it here, right? It makes it a little bit less bad if you end it here. So real quick, I got a question for you guys. I just want to give a shout out to Greg who who donated before. He said, "Follow all your content on Twitter. I listen to every podcast. Love Shane's retooling to high value positions outside of quarterback. Good stuff, Greg. Completely agree, guys. I got a question for you. Still on quarterback. I know what the answer is for Drake May, um, Jaden Daniels, and uh, and Caleb Williams. Out of Bo Nix, JJ McCarthy. And um, Penix, 
forget about where they're taken. Six, second round. Mm-hmm. Out of the three, without even seeing them play, would you rather them be the quarterback of the Giants? I'm just curious what your thoughts are because I'm I'm hearing a lot of well, any of them are going to be better. I just want to know what you guys think. Mm. You know what? Without even watching him play, I, I'll start, man. Without even watching him play, oh, so like right now, big... like right now, if you had to make the decision, uh, yeah, I'm going with Penix, and the reason why is that the, the velocity and etc. on that ball, it seems like a real true pocket passer per se, and it seems like the Giants actually bolstering up the offensive line. Mm to give the quarterback some time. So I think the Penix will, is a little bit more accurate, got a little more velocity on the ball when it comes to the Meadowlands and windy days and et cetera. Um, I just think he's able to scramble just a tad to get out the way. It moves in the pocket just a little bit. But um, I will go with Penix in a long explained answer. Then, then I hope the new guys right tackle. That's all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah right. If that's some the point. case. That's some point. <laughs> yeah, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I'm going to say for me, the year one, if you want to win now, Penix. Long term, JJ McCarthy. I think JJ McCarthy is just scratching the surface. We've seen sixty percent of what he, this guy could do, um, and it's, it feels like it's Dable's perfect kind of player. He can run. He's got a nice arm. He, he takes chances, um, and I think in the long run, when when Dable gets his hand on this ball of clay that is JJ McCarthy, he's going to mold him into exactly what he needs. And I think his high end. I think we're seeing already. Penix is a great passer. Best pocket passer in, in the draft, but I, I think we're seeing him cl- close to his ceiling in terms of what, how much better he can get. I think JJ McCarthy, we're not even close. You're not even scratching the surface. So he gives me a little bit higher ceiling, lower floor, Penix, you know, uh, higher floor. Um, right. I'm, I'd probably go JJ too, like just because, like, I I do like them both for different reasons uh, that you guys laid out, but. Penix comes with like JJ has a little more unknown where that's where you trust Dable to get the best out of him and develop him. But he's got a little more athletic ability, which I like. But Penix comes with a right tackle concern as he's a lefty. And then his injury history, which just even though he he checks out a little bit, that is a lot of baggage to start your career with. Um, so that comes with a little more risk. Like for those reasons, I'd probably go JJ if, if those top three are out of the picture. But in I think your original question is, would you sign up for basically – any of them over what we have now. Yes. And my answer is my answer is still yes. What we've been doing, <laughs> my, what we've been doing hasn't worked. Right. And <laughs> and to me, to me, Daniel looked broken mentally this past season, not just mm-hmm. physically. He was not mm-hmm. right upstairs. And that's very, very hard to fix. And you could tell by Dable's body language uh on the sidelines that he looked beyond frustrated. Like this is not what I coached you. It was the look on Throwing his shit at him. And for, and, for, yeah. and for what so, I and for what I understand, he was a little frustrated watching the film on Mondays too. So oh, so yeah. Mark Bon Jovi, who is a cousin of John, um says would <laughs> hey. Penix would Penix be drafted over Jones in the same draft? Yes. Yeah. I, other than Dave Gellman, oh, yeah. yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I would I would think yes, so. <laughs> it, it, yeah. <laughs> it's just it's hard, man. It's hard. It, 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 again, it, even if you took it from a football standpoint, I take all these quarterbacks. Then you throw on the injury risk. It's it's no doubter, guys. It's a no doubter. It's just how much do we love JJ JJ uh, and how much do we love Penix? That's the real question. I don't know. What do you guys think about Bo Nix? Are you guys Bo Nix fans? Uh, no, I'm I'm like, not, I'm not liked really, them, I'm not yeah, liked I what I liked what I saw during the season, but now like no one's going to his pro day. I'm like, oh my yeah, god, yeah, that's, that's a bad sign. How is not I, one GM? I'm not the best. Yeah, you scout. can't blame it all on free agency, <laughs> please. Yeah, no, no, that was a little strange. I have to admit that. Let, let's put it this way: if that was JJ McCarthy at the same time, you think nobody would show up? No, on, zero on, chance. Right? Zero yeah. chance. I mean, I don't. So, I got I got yeah. an interesting one for you guys. Yeah. Talk about pro days. UNC's pro day and Washington's pro day is on the same day. Where does Joe Shane go? Uh, well, they'll whack, they'll whack it up, guys. You know, there'll be three guys there. Yeah, one, yeah, but where yeah, but where, where's Joe I'm Shane? I'm gonna go, go with Drake May. Drake May. I think I think yeah, he's been, I think he's been at the four Drake May games this year. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's been yeah. he's been at those games. Uh, if he goes yeah. to Washington, I think there's real general interest there. Whereas opposed, I don't think there is right now. But if, if he picks, because he he's done his homework, I feel like on Drake May, he knows what he's getting. If he goes to Washington on on Penix's pro day, to me that's a sign. It's like, all right, maybe there's a chance here. Where I thought right now, I don't, I don't, I think he's like their QB five. But uh, if, if he goes there, if there's real general interest that would have me pretty intrigued. 
<laughs> Guys, real quick, 1,700 people watching right Holy now. Holy shit. Oh, yo. Let's go. That's my what I Lord. Like to hear. Let's Maybe go. We got to have these guys on more. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. You guys so are we, the stars. Come on. So during Come the on. season, we do two podcasts. Maybe we have you on for one of them. <laughs> you guys are great. We'll, you know. this again. we'll do this again. We would love to be back on. And, you know, and vice versa, you know, we'd love you know to get where. you guys on ours, on ours as well. So that will be great. Yeah, well, we're not done yet, Eli. So I don't know if that was a goodbye, but I kind of want to keep going <laughs> a little bit. So. Well, so, I do have a question. You know, ready to head out. Wrap it up. Okay, sound like you were trying to get. Sounds sound like you were trying to get out of here. Like, well, it's been a yeah, fun bro. time. We'll see you on our podcast. Like, oh. we've been yeah, burning it on both it. ends. He's going to. He's going to the emails, dude. He came. Jerry, this is our. Hey, gentlemen, I got. I got to run something by. Is all right? Is it really, Jeff? It's a fourth show. Me and Spiro did one Monday. A free free agency one. And then oh, we did a regular a Tuesday league? night, Big Blue UK. No, no. Today. This is this yeah, is this I saw is the Big Blue UK today too. Week. Yeah. This is our fourth show and it's Wednesday night. I love it. This is what I want to do. And and, look, and 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 guys, these guys have little ones at home. Like you know, Chris and my our kids are old, they take care of themselves, but these guys, you gotta put them to bed and bath them and stuff. Like, wow. Well, I was doing that 90 stars, seconds bro. before yeah. I got here. When you saw you gotta do it, bro. What the hell? Yeah. You know that. Hey. Yeah. Right. It, grind. This is our dream, man. So uh, we we we're going after it, man. We we love talking sports giants football particularly so we could do this every day of the week shout out wfa shout out serious shout out uh <laughs> spiro spiro real quick spiro i didn't I, i'm just i don't know start trouble but do you do you like to talk hockey spiro as well or no I'm a, kind of a big hockey fan i don't know if you ever i know ever seen joking. It. uh yeah right. i am ecstatic cherry i think we won a division with that game last night it's a good game i think I, you know, i don't want to draw game. huge game huge yeah. game Huge win. Rangers Huge. back on track. Knicks on track. MSG is is gonna it's gonna be awesome. This you named the, you named your you named your thing revival. Uh, you know, it, it kind of at the right time. Other than the Giants, right? We well, thought we had it for crazy. a second too. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you did. Want to know something crazy? We launched this this New York revival when the New York football soccer like the soccer team they won their championship FC. so we was yeah. like oh, it's an omen and then freaky the giants started oh, really? to do their the thing we, and then the we way? yeah okay yeah and we were like oh it's an omen so new york sports started to come alive the knicks was in the playoffs i think that year as well yeah. so it just started to do you know extremely well so i guess it's an omen man new york revival i guess hey we gotta get a ship sports, though we gotta get a ship <laughs> can i get a what next one man we gotta championship. get a ship we gotta get a championship oh, oh, oh. baby <laughs> that's get millennial get a championship i hate to tell yeah. you so, this, girl, you're not gonna get either one so anyway oh, 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 biz, oh, biz. Hey. oh let me ask you this biz because i think and this is funny this look, is funny uh, the knicks ain't going you know not winning the championship i mean this but i think they could probably do not I think they could do some damage. Go ahead, Eli. Rangers, Rangers do the usual. So anyway, oh, right, Eli, Eli's, Eli's got a question for Chris, actually. So, so Chris, I, I want to paint this picture for the audience, actually, first, guys, because when we went to training camp last season, mm -hmm. we saw the biz there. We had the biz on the show. We finally met him in person, and we presented him a no DJ slant. <laughs> yes, yes, you did. Yes, did. guys, the no DJ slander T-shirt, and he said, "Hey." I'm going to keep one for myself, and we're going to give one to Darius Slayton. And boy, did he. Uh, and he gave it to a, him, and he bench. wore it Monday night for that Dallas game. I have a question, a long-winded question here. Did Darius Slayton burn that shirt after all? That's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Let the viewers sit up. Oh, did he burn that damn shirt no, right after the game? No, Come on. No, DJ's no. his guy. No, no. <laughs> DJ's, DJ's his guy. Slay loves him. Oh, loves so. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So, that was awesome. There it is. That was the peak of, that was I, the, peak of the season. Literally yeah, right. before the game downhill. started. Guys, I think I told you this. Downhill. I told you this back in camp. He was so excited when I told him that. I never forget, but I told him, he goes, oh, oh man, you got to get that to me. You know, he was really excited. He says, I'm going to wear that. You know, and he did. He oh, that awesome. was just a great Listen, thing. It, it didn't funny. age very well, but number one, you're cool as hell for getting that to him. And oh, number well, two, I, like, no, 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 when, no. We, when we dreamt it up, it was like, man, a Giants wide receiver wearing our shirt would be just the coolest fucking thing in the world. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And it happened. Like, you you it helped happened. make it happen for us. So, like, oh, that, 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 pleasure, that was uh, my pleasure. That was cool. So, that was hey, great. guys, so I, I want to run some We appreciate you, honestly. Thank you. No, no, nah, nah, you're welcome, brother. You're welcome. But, guys, you know, I, I, wrote a, I wrote a column in The Last Giant Insider, and I've been talking about it. And I want to get you guys feeling this. To me, this draft, Joe Sheen's got to hit it out of the park, brother. Mm. Okay? Hands we got to draft some damn impact freaking players here, man. You know, um, let's face it, right? I mean, and I mentioned this. This is going to be his third draft, and this is going to be his third draft where he's had a sixth round or higher, okay? First draft, he had a five and a seven. Yeah. 
Look, guys, right now his seventh overall pick looks like he might even be in the league in a few years. Okay. Mm. We'll see if that changes this year. Look, he was he's always been a little banged up, Evan, so and all that, but he hasn't been good. Let's face it, right? Stop with the excuses. If you if you play, you have to produce. That's the way it is in this league. I know I, I'm sick of hearing excuses about going to left tackle, the right. Tackle. Listen, Tristan yeah. Worse just oh. went from right tackle to left tackle, and he played like an old pro. So please, I, I don't want to hear that crap anymore. Okay. <laughs> the bottom line is that he's a seventh overall pick, and he might be a big miss. He might not even be. He might not even be the right tackle this year where he was drafted. Okay, <laughs> as we know. So and then you got Thibodeau, who was five overall. Now Tibbs, nobody's giving up on him. Tibbs has been good. There's also been times where you sat there. I'm sure guys watching the game going, "Is, is Thibodeau playing?" You know, and you know, yeah. there's been a lot of miss, a lot of been. Now, Thibodeau definitely has an upside. We know that. I'm not, I'm not down on Tibbs, but he has to improve on certain aspects of his game. We hope Brian Burns will definitely mm, help exactly. improve that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but there is, look, guys, here's the bottom line. I know Tibbs had 11 and a half sacks last year, right? But a lot of it was cleanup sacks too. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was coverage cleanup sacks. It wasn't just boom, I'm beating that guy one on one. I'm there in two seconds. Boom. That quarterback now. Facts. You're just talking facts. Okay. I'm talking facts. As you guys know, tips I feel will get better and better. Okay. But, yeah. but fellas, <laughs> and I put this, you know, a fifth overall mm. pick, two years in the league. This kid's got to be an impact guy. So here we are now, right? So the other plays, Joe's some nice plays. Look, Wandell's going to be a real good slot kid. No doubt yeah. about it. Yeah. Okay. But now you have the sixth overall pick, okay? So we got to start knocking some balls over the green monster. You hear that? Yeah. <laughs> you hear that? Boston F -A fan, F -A okay. Boston. F -A yeah, Yankee yeah. FAZ Yankee yeah. fan. All right, yeah. over the green monster. Yeah. You know, by the yeah. way, by the way, uh, is Aaron Georgia right? I heard he was a little beat up in spring training. He needs a couple of weeks off already. Right? He... <laughs> oh, guys, guys, seriously, what Let's is not it? Even talk about base, Let's baseball not talk about players. Cold. Oh my god! The anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, it's it's always. Oh. Cool. I want to get your opinion. Hey guys, we need some impact guys. Joe, yeah. I'm looking at your dress right now, and I'm not looking at one. You had one what Pro Bowl, a third alternate. Guys, you look what the Lions did last year. They had four saying. high picks. Yes. They had one rookie second team all pro. Yes. Not the bullshit pro bowl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's that's a popularity. Players, fans, all that bullshit vote. All pro. Mm -hmm. You got Brian Branch. He's probably heading there someone someday. Right? How how did Gibbs do for them and that and that run? Yeah. Pretty good. Game changer. Game and Jack changer. Campbell is gonna be playing next to Alex, and Jack Campbell is gonna be a very good impact player. Mm. Okay. What I'm saying is, Joe, we got to we got to kick this up, brother. Yeah, this is I your agree. third draft. All right, we need some impact guys in here. I don't know how you guys feel about uh, uh, E. Go first. How you feel about how about is this a very important draft for Joe Shane to really improve and fill this and fill up some holes in this roster, man? Extremely. And and Biz, you hit the nail on the head. You know what I mean? When you start looking at the past draft picks that Joe Shane bought in, you're looking at Evan Neal, like you said, might not be in the league, right? If he doesn't get it together. And you're looking at Kayvon Thibodeau, where he was mostly impact on like the trash teams, unfortunately, lack of a better words, where the team wasn't as great. They was, you know, they wasn't superior at all. Especially when you compare him to like, you know, Aiden Hutchinson from the, the Lions, like that guy came in was an impact player. So when you start looking at it and you start looking at, okay, man, what, what what's Joe Shane doing here? What is he building? Is he building a proper foundation? You got to go, no. Or is it to be continued at this point? So at this particular draft, he has to draft the people that's going to come in to make that impact right away, right away. And I think, I don't want to say his job's on the line. I don't want to say none of that because I think he was dealt a very bad hand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? At this mm -hmm. point, but, at this point, you got to start seeing results in some of your draft pick. And I mean, right away. We can't say, well, maybe if someone comes in and helps him, he'll do a little bit better. Oh, bring it in Burns and Kayvon can be a little bit better. You know what? If we switch Evan Neal, he could be a little bit better here. No, these guys have to Thank earn you. their paycheck at the end of the day. Thank at the end of the day. They're getting paid. Mm -hmm. They're professional athletes. Go out there and earn your pay. And if you can't do that, get me the person in here that's going to do it. So, Joe Shane, this is very important for you. This is going to mold your future here with the Giants franchise. And again, I'm not saying lose your job. I'm not. But I'm just saying if, if you have another year after the after this one, right, 
and you don't have that impact player where you go, you know, we can build off this and continue to build around this roster. You might be in trouble. You just just might be, at least from the mm. fans' perspective, you might be in trouble. I don't know about the owner, but from the fans, they're going to want blood, man. So this is extremely, extremely, extremely important. Extremely important. Hands down. I agree with you. Go ahead, Spiro. Yeah, I mean, listen, if I were to grade his drafts right now, it's, it's a solid B. Like, you got some guys with potential. You know, it, it, Tibbs has the most potential. Juan Dale's got potential. Hyatt's got potential. John Michael Schmitz. You know, there, Neil, you know, w w brings that grade down, of course. But there's no stars. There's no stars, and we need to start seeing some stars. And they got to happen, like, right away. So um, it, it, it's a huge fork in the road draft, like he was saying. Um, it's a fork in the road draft. It's not going to determine right away if he get fired. But if he nails this draft, it sets this franchise and him up for possibly a long, fruitful career. And if he met the misses – it goes down the other path, and we start saying, hey, the leash is getting shorter. It's getting shorter, you know. So um, he's got to knock it out the park, and he got to give us something to, to really work with. We want that star potential somewhere. Get your your alpha wide receiver. Get your quarterback. If, if you do those two things, I think a lot of fans are going to accept and love your draft. So big fork in the road draft for Shane, in my opinion. This, like, yeah, this upcoming one will, I feel like it's a major fork in the road for the Giants. This is either going to say, okay, you've got pieces like the, the prior draft picks finally came together on one more good, solid draft. And now you've got a team and you're building and you're going in the right direction. You're not there yet, but at least you feel like you're on your way. But if this falls to shit and a lot of it's going to come down to the quarterback position, if it falls away and you're, you're at another five or six win season, it's going to get so loud. Like the patient, there is no patience. Dable already survived the two year curse of the last three coaches. So we got that third year. And I think year one pretty much was a pass and they, they happened to, to strike a, a little gold in, in 2022, but this is such a big year, man. Like you have to absolutely knock it out of the park because there are draft picks every year in every round that turn into stars. You just got to find a way to grab some, like you look at the way San Fran Guys. drafts like year in and year out. Like those guys the are Chiefs? there. You know, you look back yeah, at when geez. the Giants drafted, like those guys yeah. were there. Anybody could have had them, but the right yeah. teams pick them for the right systems. And you've got to do that. And and right now, I think Shane still has everything to prove. Um, I'm I'm a Dable guy. I still believe in him as as the head coach and that he can get his hands on a quarterback and develop in and, and turn him into a star. I think Shane has everything to prove still. Um, after a good the first year, I mean, there wasn't much wiggle room for him, but looking at his draft picks. The Daniel Jones deal, all of that, I think he's back to square one. And I think if he knocks it out of the park, good. Okay, now you got a coach and a GM. Let's keep going. Ironically, I think the leash on Dable, though, is shorter than Shane's. That's yep. just yeah. me. Yeah. Typically, yeah. You're, you're right. You're right yep. with everything you said, Jeff. Yep. But I believe that. And I, that's, you know, yeah. I mean, it's just the that's because you're a coach rather than GM. And Liam's right, though. I left out Banks. Banks has star potential, too. So we got to give him a shot. Well, I've, I've argued that Banks and, and Wandale are his two best draft picks so far. So yeah. far, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I, I mean, totally agree. <clears throat> T Banks definitely has a high upside, no question about it. He looks oh, like, like he's that, an excellent yeah. corner. But guys, this look, look he, you know, Joe goes out last year and trades it down. Well, that's blowing up in his face. Yeah, guys, that's blowing up. You know, he's injured again. And you took a chance on a guy. I get it, third round pick. But and now he and now he's playing this. Oh, I'm going to retire. I'm not going to retire. I'm not quite sure. Maybe I'm going to be. Why haven't they cut him yet? Maybe Chris. I'm not going to be Chris, this. I'm, tell I mean, me this. Why haven't they cut him yet? Why are we wasting well, our I gotta time? I got to be honest with you, Spill. I was talking to a guy the other day about it. You know, and he's like, oh, it's wild. And I'm like, why don't you just cut him? Yeah. If, he, if he's talking about his foot's out the door, cut him. Right. Cut him. You're already, you're already if you're done not talking it. about it. I, I mean, exactly. If you're not in it 100%, cut. if right. you have 10% doubt, it's right. time to go. Cut him. Listen, if you got 5% doubt, if you're not sure you're not coming back, and you got yeah. get out. Like, like, let's Take get somebody else need. in here and figure this out. <laughs> Figure it out. I mean, like at this point, what are you keeping him for? But anyway, that's just me. And I gotta be honest with you, e. I gotta be honest with you. Even if he says, you know, because still a lot of money he's gonna give up, right? So even if he says, yeah. you know what, uh, yeah, I'm good to go. I'll be back next year. Do you really feel his heart nope. is 100 percent in it? No, no way. You want to make records? No. Let him make records. You know, let him and, go and, and I, make I, records. I, and I've heard his, and I've heard his music. He's not freaking biggie. Okay. No, he's not. <laughs> okay. I mean, he's not. Shout out to you. That no. video. That video was he's, uncomfortable. He's not. Oh, he's not, he's not even my boy. Freaking meth. 
Okay. Exactly. You always it. shout out Meth. Dude. Yes. Good Thank call. You, I'm not gonna lie to you. I say right now, Eli, our very own Eli Rax, is a significantly better <laughs> rapper than Darren. Uh, sure. uh, the I, point I, being, I, like, look, all I'm saying, fellas, is God bless you. Appreciate that, Darren. If that's what you want to do, God bless you. I'm not here to judge anybody. Right. All I'm <laughs> saying is, dude, come on now. Let let right, this exactly. team know if you if obviously you're a host on 100, in it, so just you know, do your thing. You know what I mean? But even if he says, like I just said, even if he says, uh, uh, hey, Dave, it's Darren. I'll be back. I'll see you at OTAs. I'll see you. you know, how much is he? I mean, are you going to no. really look at him and say, <laughs> okay, you know, so, uh, you know, that to me is say, like, come on, enough now. You Again, he's part, of, so not. He's, he, he's part of a team that was losing. So at this point, it's just like, dude, like the fans will be okay. You, you, we thought you was going to be that difference maker coming in. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out or pan out the way it should have been. It's time to go. Like at this point, the Giants need to go, you know what? Let's just rebuild this thing completely. And let's just get rid of them and let, let's see what Bellinger can do. Let's see if someone else a draft someone can do at this point. Because nice. he's just not the answer. He wasn't doing anything, you know, for us when he was here, unfortunately. It's just, I don't know, my opinion. Guys, listen, you know, I, I know you got other commitments, uh, especially Hefe. You, you know, you got little ones at home. We really want to thank you guys for joining us. Uh, this was a blast. I can't, probably got done this for about five hours and yeah. talk Giants yes. with you guys. And what I've said from the start when oh, we started yeah. talking to you guys, oh, yeah. I said, you, you, you were guys that we can, you, you can, you can go to a bar um, and, and have a beer and, and talk Let's football. Let's do that. And that was Let's yeah, do that. <laughs> no no reason it. why we Let's shouldn't. Yeah, I mean, we have. Spiro, Spiro, yeah. how'd you out by me, bro? Where do you live? No, I'm I'm in I'm in Central Jersey. Uh, you know, I'm in right oh, in uh, you over by, uh, Somerville or something. Like Where? That. I thought I, I, I am. Thought I, yeah, I thought yeah. I was in Central Jersey. Oh, you're not yeah. far from me then, but you're like 20 minutes from me. That's yeah, th four of us say we're from Central Jersey and we're yeah, all across I'm the sorry, state. I don't know what Central Jersey is. <laughs> right. Oh, I didn't know you were, I know. You're, you're, in Somerville, you're in Somerville, right, Spill? Somerville, uh, maybe. You're like you're yes. 20 minutes from me. Let's let's yeah. let's let's link up. Actually, let's hit the links. Me and you, uh, me and you, you hit the links. Spiro, do you hit the do you hit the strip, Somerville? You know, uh, Wolfgang and all that. Uh, almost, almost every. Uh, I, was, weekend, I was there sir. last week. I was in a cigar lounge and I hit Wolfgang afterwards. Text you know? me. Let's go. Come on, right, let's make this yeah, happen. Okay. Chris. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought that's what you said, man. Yes, sir. I'm ten minute walk. Ten minute walk right down Grove gotcha. Street. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> so Eli, I'm gonna let you take us out. I never do this. Yeah. But you got to end it with <laughs> Sundays or Giant Days, or are you're never coming back? So do whatever you want before that. You got to end it with yeah, Sundays hold, hold or Giant on. Days. Jerry, one second, Jerry. Eli, yeah. I got to ask you, favorite rapper yep. of all time? Who you got? Ooh, Let's go around right. the horn for that one. Yeah. Really? Really? Favorite rapper of all time, or, or my my favorite? Honestly, honestly, it's in a mm. group, man. My favorite rappers are Bone Thugs and Harmony. But if I have oh, to say the GOAT, the greatest of all time, will be the notorious B.I.G. Yeah. Um, hands down. Hands That's down. Good. Thank you, hands E. Down. I mean, hands listen, I, I, I this is my guy. This is my guy. This is why we're, we're, we're BFFs, me and E. Um, I have to say the same. I have to say the same. I want, I could make a make up a lie and say, you know, somebody else is close. It's Biggie. It's Biggie all day. Every Pick day. in the door, wave in the 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> <laughs> don't hit me no more. Hit me no more. Hefe, no, I'm going to ask go. you this. Hefe, you ready? Uh, give, me give me your greatest guitarist of all time. Ooh. Hmm. Hey. I like this. We had this discussion, too. I, I like this. We did. Because he actually plays, too. That's a good question. I know. I don't say Jimmy Page. Guitar douche. Not, not Jimmy Page. Douche. Jimmy Page. Uh, Jimmy Page will never talk in again. I was between, <laughs> I was between the two Jimmys, to be honest with you. And it's I went Jimmy Page. But you could I could have said Hendrix, too. But it's Jimmy Page. Ooh, Eddie Van Halen, top five? I'm not a Van Halen. I mean, obviously, respect the hell out of him. But I was not a big Van Halen guy. Uh, mm. But he's phenomenal, obviously. That's a rapper, though. Rapper. Uh, well, as you could tell, I'm, I'm a Tupac guy. Yeah, I don't know why. Just West like Coast. obviously, I love Biggie. Like I Hold think, up. Up. yeah. But Tupac was was the one that I gravitated to, and you know, you know, white guy in the Jersey Shore just just rapping along. <laughs> it just Tupac. screams, screams yeah. Tupac. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm going off the let board. Me, let me I'm going, guys. Real quick, I'm going off the board. Chuck D, Public Enemy. Like, hey, oh hey, respect. respect, absolutely. I like that respect. though. I it's like a board that. Terror kicking off an era. <laughs> love. Let's Chuck go. D. Let's respect. go. Now listen, I do have a favorite underground artist, and that is Ransom. Ransom yeah. is like Shout the out. greatest to me. Shout out to Ransom. Shout Shout out. Ransom. Shout that's the voice on oh, our that's right. intro. Boy, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on. I'm, I'm nodding like I know, and then I yes. Okay. <laughs> no, now you know. Now you know. <laughs> now you know. We got. If you don't know, now you know. Are you are you a hometown Wu Tang guy? I actually worked with some of them. 
Absolutely. Hey. Uh, if nobody doesn't know, I did music in the past. Um, I thought I was a rapper at the time until I found my calling of talking <laughs> to you guys as a Giants fan here. So, but uh, yeah, I worked with a couple of them back in the day. It was awesome. Still great people. Still work with some of them. Um, great people, man. So yeah, definitely. A who'd you, who'd you work with? Oh man, listen, Deck. I worked with Deck, man. We worked with uh, King Just. Worked with a bunch of Killer Army people as well. So. Shout out to them. Truth, truth says young joker. <laughs> yeah, right. I, saw that. That I like it. I like it. Did you work yeah. with uh did you work with Big Cliff? Meth? Yeah, you know what? I, I oh. as much as I wanted to, like we went to his like when we was doing music at the time, we went to his tour, like in North Carolina. Cool. And um he's a good dude, man. You know, but uh he's also hard to get in touch with. So hey, dog. Look, you hear if you hear shout that, out yeah. I'm, I'm sure they're watching stuff. Yeah. Shout, out, shout, out to man. shout out to man gentlemen it's been shout great brother love you guys oh, it's been, e, take, take us out here e, take us out yo let me take you out let me take you guys out guys if you don't know who we are you've been living under a rock here man and if we merged together and made this incredible show on behalf of my brothers man you guys know who this is and that's of course the biz chris bizignato my guy here, Jerry Fowler, and of course, Mr. Glass Half Full, and that's Spee if you nasty now. Let's go. And of Let's course, go. my Let's brother go. El Jefe, aka White Jersey, aka Blue Jersey, aka <laughs> Damn It Daniel, and then it's your boy Eli Rax, <laughs> aka Vibes, and this is the Giants Revival. We'll see y'all on the next one. Peace and blessings. Yes, sir. <laughs> Football Sundays. Football uh, <laughs> Sundays. Yeah. <laughs> Sundays. <laughs> What was that? Sun I'm sorry. Sundays are yeah, Sundays. Are <laughs> Sunday the Giant Days. Sunday the Giant Days. Giant days. I screwed that up. I screwed you that up. You fire him. Fire him. Oh, I'm fine.